Should Christians celebrate Valentine's Day? This is the question that we're going to answer in our study today. And if you're joining for the first time, this is our Bible study here at Influence Church. And if you missed any of our previous studies, what you can do is you can go to our YouTube channel, click on the videos tab, and then you can rewatch any of our previous studies. As a matter of fact, if you have not done it as yet, I don't know why you have not done it, but hit that share button and hit that subscribe button so that you will get the latest notifications on all our new studies. All right, so we're jumping into this question today. Should Christians celebrate Valentine's Day? And I know there are going to be two polar opposites. Some are going to say yes, some are going to say no, but we're going to find out what does the Bible say about Valentine's Day. And you might be surprised to see as we journey through this, some of the evidence that we find historically concerning and surrounding Valentine's Day. So grab your notepad so you can take some notes, grab your Bible so you can follow along, and let's jump into the presentation for today. So should Christians celebrate Valentine's Day? To figure out the answer to this, we're going to do three things. Number one, we're going to answer the question of how did it start, all right? Historical background. Number two, how is it celebrated? Currently, in our modern day culture, how is Valentine's Day celebrated? Number three, what does the Bible say about it? By answering these three questions, we're going to be answering the big question of, should you, as a Christian, be celebrating Valentine's Day? So, how did it start? Now, there are two main storylines historically for the roots of Valentine's Day. Now, it's kind of obscure. It's not too clear where or how Valentine's Day originated, but these are the main two beliefs of how Valentine's Day came about. And the first one is a Roman festival known as Lupa Senalia, all right? And the second one is the story of this Christian feast day that honors Saint Valentine, right? So we're going to jump into the first one. What is this Roman festival of Lupa Senalia? This Roman festival uh, was celebrated in ancient Rome on February the 15th. And the purpose of this celebration was a fertility rite to worship the god known as Faunus, right? And on this celebration, what they would do is they would take dogs and goats as they were believed to be animals that re represented fertility, right? I, I know for Easter, there's a bunny and that's, that's that Easter and those, that bunny and that fertility is a different um, set of teaching, right? That is on, not under Roman, but that is under Greek mythology. So we're speaking about Roman worship, right? And in the Roman worship, they would worship Faunus, which is quite similar to some of the Greek gods as well that was responsible for fertility in terms of the storyline and what the worship was about, right? But here they would take goats and dogs and they would sacrifice these animals. Then they would take the blood of the sacrificed animal and they would, they would pass it on a knife and pass it on some white wool. And they would take this knife that has the blood residue and they would then mark the head of two young men that were part of the ritual. And these two young men, catch this, these two young men had to laugh for the entirety of the ritual. Get that? For the entirety of the ritual. That is really freaky. They just had to be laughing the whole time. They would mark these two young men and then they would take the dead animal they, and they would skin the animal and they would cut strips of the animal's skin and use it now as a whip. And what they would do is they would go around striking the woman and it was believed that by when the woman received this strike of this, this lash of the animal that was sacrificed, the skin of the animal, that the woman would become fertile. They would also take the names of women and by lottery select women to be assigned to different men to be for, again, the purpose of fertility. Now, it was not a marriage proposal. It was not an arranged marriage either. It was simply this sense of sexual drive and sexual immorality and fertility, all right? Um, and this would have led to them celebrating the fertility god known as Faunus. This celebration eventually was put to an end in the 5th century by Pope Gelasius I, right? So he's the one that stopped this celebration, this Roman festival. And during that time is when the Roman government kind of shifted from Roman um, paganistic worship to where they adopted Christianity and, and, and made it into Roman Catholicism. Now, I, I talked a lot about Roman Catholicism in previous studies, so you can check those out on the YouTube channel as well. All right, so this is this first belief, right? This, is, this predates the second one. So the second one that we're going to talk about 
comes after the original Roman festival known as Lupercalius. <laughs> Lupercalia, right? And the second one is a Christian fest feast day honoring Saint Valentine. So after the Roman festival of Lupercalia was put to an end, it was then there were some myths going around that um, that they, this celebration on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, would have started due to celebration of Saint Valentine. Now, it is believed that what the Roman Pope would have done, which they often would do, is they would have established Valentine's Day, the day before the Roman pagan worship celebration of Lupa Celia, to curb the celebration, right? So by they, they would have put it to, an end, to a stop. They would have said, no more Lupa Celia. But to kind of counteract it, they would have replaced it with a different celebration, which is Valentine's Day. Now, the origins behind Valentine's Day that the Roman Pope would have established was that they were using that day to celebrate a martyr known by Valentine. So he died, right? He was murdered. And they didn't even, it's not too clear historically on which Valentine they were celebrating because there were more than one Valentine, Saint Valentine, that had done something that people would then talk about and what they were celebrated for. And it's not too certain on which one. Now, they, I'll tell you about the two of them, right? One of them was imprisoned for trying to reduce the harshness in which the Romans would have treated the Christians that were placed in prison, right? So he tried to help them. He tried to set them free to a certain extent. And he was then found in prison. And when he was placed in prison, and while in prison, he wrote letters to a young lady that he had fallen in love with, and he would have signed them, My Valentine, his name being Valentine. And it is believed that possibly the lady he had fallen in love with was actually the jailer's daughter who visited him while he was in jail. So that's the first um, storyline of one of the Valentines. The second Valentine is the one that you might be more familiar with. And he was believed to be a, a, a Roman Catholic priest that were marrying young couples uh, behind the scene on the hand because at that time Rome wanted all the men to go to war so they had put a ban on marriages not allowing men to get married because if they got married they were, then they were exempted from war for a period of a year so this Pope secretly underground were marrying um, couples eventually he was arrested and murdered for it and again this is where the story of Valentine started right because this Pope named Valentine um, was supposedly celebrating love by marrying these two couples to get these these couples together and then the other Valentine was celebrating love because he fell in love while in prison we don't know which one of them is the origins of the modern day celebration of Valentine but this is where the stories come from all right these two different popes so we cover the historical background right we see that before um, the honoring of Saint Valentine. It was the Roman festival of Lupercalia. It was an evil festival. The Pope and the Pope tried to end it, and then he tried to curb it by raising this new celebration called Valentine's Day. Somewhere around the 270 AD, the story would have um, started circulating about this priest named Valentine that did something heroic, and then they used this day to honor this man. And now we move to our modern day Valentines, right? So modern day Valentines or the formal form of Valentines where you would write cards and you would purchase um, gifts really kind of kicked off in around the 1500s into the 1700s and it really became more commercialized in the mid 1800s. Now Valentines commonly depict Cupid. And again, Cupid is a Roman god of love and with the hearts and all the traditional set of emotions that is attached to what we know today. Again, here we see something. We see that the origins of Valentine predating the Saint Valentine circulated some kind of Roman pagan worship. And then even in modern day Valentines where it talks about Cupid, the love God, lo this Cupid again is a pagan Roman God. And then even with the story of celebrating valentine's because there was a saint who did something in the name of love uh that comes down to the romans decided roman catholic church decided that they will worship or honor this man right and we shouldn't really honor a man per se in terms of i mean we're talking about almost two thousand years later we're honoring a man right um 
human being, normal guy, didn't intend to do anything significant. But the Romans used it, the Roman Catholic Church used it to be able to curb this particular celebration. So what does that mean now? We cover the historical background, we cover how it is celebrated now. What does the Bible say about it? And actually, well, I guess you probably noticed, but just in case you didn't notice, the Bible does not celebrate Valentine's. So Valentine's Day is not found in the Bible. Jesus did not endorse it. Jesus didn't celebrate Valentine's Day. All of this came after Jesus. And now then if Jesus didn't celebrate it, if it's not in the Bible, then should Christians celebrate it? So the Bible doesn't talk about Valentine's Day because it didn't exist when the Bible was written. And it isn't something that afterwards during the time of Paul and they, they would have known about the Roman cel celebration of, um, what's the name? Luca... Lupercalia, right? Paul, they would have known about this Roman celebration. They didn't address this celebration directly, but countless times they would address all the different pagan worship and all those celebrations telling the Christians to not be a part of it. So it's clear when it comes to the pagan worship, right? The worship of the Lupercalia, where they would sacrifice um, these animals and they would put the blood on the people and they would go around worshiping the fertility god. It's clear cut that the Bible clearly says that we are not to participate in this pagan form of worship. Now, if we're saying we are not looking at that as our current way of celebration and celebrating Valentine's Day because we are looking at celebrating love, it's a day to celebrate your loved ones, it's a day for romance as it's sold in our modern day society. And yeah, the origins may be around Pope Va the Saint Valentine's instead. He did something pretty heroic to celebrate love, uh, but the he was not this was not a christian celebration i want you to understand that biblically it's not a christian celebration while it might be commercialized or even claimed to be a christian celebration it is not a christian celebration it's not one of the feasts that we are called to observe as a christian as we are called to observe um communion uh so it's not uh, we are called to observe easter in terms of the death and resurrection it's not one of those christian celebrations even though it might say that on wikipedia uh, that was the Roman Catholic Church deciding that they will establish this holiday, Valentine's Day, again, to counteract the Roman pagan worship of the God of fertility. So what does that mean for us as Christians? Are we now going to say, well, we're not doing the Roman part of it. We're not sacrificing. We're not, we're not worshiping their fertility God. But we want to celebrate love. Everybody is celebrating love. Can we celebrate love as well? And I want to give you a few scripture verses to help you in this decision-making process, right? And these scripture verses are going to kind of guide you along. The first one says, whoever does not love God, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Uh, this scripture kind of tells us clearly that in order to know love, you have to know God, right? And modern day Valentine's Day does not have anything to do with God. It is all about uh, love and romance between man and woman, between uh, each other. Well, I, I can't even say man and woman anymore in modern day's Valentine's. Of course, it includes all different forms of our modern day culture of love when it comes to relationships in our modern day culture. That is not according to biblical guidelines or the word of God. So what does it really mean then when we celebrate Valentine's Day? Because the Bible tells us that to know God is to know love. And if Valentine's Day is celebrated by a principle of love and that love is not based on God, then is it really love that we are celebrating on Valentine's Day? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Because the only way to really know true love is to know God. And as a church, we know God. So therefore we know love. But Valentine's Day was not established by the Church of God. It was established by the Church of um, the Roman Catholics. And I would talk a lot about how Roman Catholics does not fall under that the, the early church or what the Church of God was established to be because Roman Catholic was the Roman government absorbing Christianity into their, into their governance so that they could then control the population. So to say it's a Christian festival is certainly not, right? And it's not based on God in any way. So therefore, if we're saying we're celebrating love and God isn't part of that love, then as Christians, we are completely missing the mark of what love is. 
And that's my, that's kind of the main problem with Valentine's Day because if Valentine's Day is supposed to be based on love, but it has nothing to do with God, then who is setting the standard or defining what love is? Because if the definition of love is not God, but instead is whatever the world defines it to be, and right now in our modern day culture, love is, is whatever you feel, and you could love whoever you feel to love, and you could love however you feel to love, and, and feelings is not a definitive proof of truth because feelings change. Absolute truth does not change. And when it comes to the truth of what love is, the Bible tells us that God is love. That is the truth of what God, of what love is. As a matter of fact, look at what John chapter 15 and verse 13 says, right? Jumping back into the slideshow, it says that greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Again, speaking about Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross for us. And 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, this is how we know what love is, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now, Valentine's Day speaks about love, but more in a self-serving way than a sacrificial way because it's about what you can buy me, what you can do for me, how you can make me feel loved, and true love is not what I can get, but it's how I can give. It's sacrificial. And the, the, the ultimate definition of that is what Jesus did on the cross for us. He sacrificed his life for us. And if we continue a little bit further, we see that Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4 says that marriage should be honored by all. And marriage, the marriage bed is to be kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immorality. Now, the origins predating poop, um, predating St. Valentine's was based on sexual immorality. It was a celebration of fertility. And even in our modern day culture, there's this big drive on Valentine's Day that love must be tied together with, with sex. And for, for those that are unmarried, it's, it's a drive towards Valentine's Day being that, that day of of, of sexual immorality because that's the way that you celebrate love and you would see it in the movies that are about valentine's day you would hear it in the songs that are about valentine's day and for for the unmarried for those that are out that uh, are our young people that are still developing still growing there's this big expectation on valentine's day that it's supposed to be a sexually a sexual experience and that again ties back to um pagan worship and it is outside of God's will for sex. So we see here that there are aspects of Valentine's Day that clearly is against God's principles and God's word. We don't see the Bible directly addressing Valentine's Day, but we see some of the principles that are celebrated in our modern day culture is not principles that God has prescribed for Christians. As Christians, we should have sacrificial love. As Christians, we should love one another regardless of what we receive in return. As Christians, love is not something that is purchased, but it's something that is given. It's how we how we show and how we demonstrate love. Yes, we can purchase items to demonstrate love, but that gift is not the, the love itself, but the act of loving someone by using some of the finances that we would have worked for. That is really how we we show that love through purchasing a gift. So this Valentine's Day, when it's that hype of the expectations of you have to do this, you have to do, if you don't do this, then you are not showing me love. It is against uh, biblical principles of what true love is. And definitely if we leave God out of the entire Valentine's Day celebration, then we miss the whole aspect of love. Now, of course, the Bible does celebrate love between husband and wife. It does celebrate that that love that is shared between parents and children. It does celebrate that that love that is shared between friends. So love is good. God is love. And the Bible does celebrate love. As a matter of fact, some Bible verses are very clear on the celebration of love and of romance. Song of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 7 says, You are altogether beautiful. Right? Um, let me just switch back over. It says, You are altogether beautiful. And, uh, and then we have another verse, which is Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 15, which says, You are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are like doves, right? So that sounds like something that you might read on a Valentine's Day card. The issue is that 
uh, the messages on Valentine's Day in alignment with God's principles for love? Or is it in opposition to the biblical understanding of what love is? And that is what as as to believe as Christians, that is what we have to examine and then make a decision on. So whether you should or should not celebrate Valentine's Day, it's really a question, uh, an answer of your decision, right? So it's not a fixed yes or no. For me, I'm neither here nor there. I don't really try to celebrate Valentine's Day, but I'm not against Valentine's Day at the same time. But I get, but like everything that we do in this life, we have to examine the principles. Because if we're not careful, we will allow worldly standards of love, worldly standards of what it means to celebrate love in terms of how Valentine's Day has this drive of, of sex. And for young people, it puts an extreme pressure to do something that is on, on that is against the word of God. And then the aspect of who defines love if God is love and Valentine's Day was was is something that the world really established because it's not a, a Christian principle. It's not a biblical principle. It's not something that was celebrated in the Bible. It wasn't even established based on Christian beliefs. It was just whimsically decided by the Pope to be able to curb a pagan festival that was previously instated. So we have to be careful of these things. We have to know are we really celebrating from a place of what God's love means? Are we really loving people from a place of sacrifice on Valentine's Day? Or is it just a day where we're trying to prove something to somebody? We're trying to prove to somebody that we love them. And we're trying to prove to people that we are happily in love. And instead of us working every day at our relationships, working every day to love the people that are in our life, we are diverting to where we don't really love people the way that we should. And just on one day for the year, we are, quote unquote, pretending that we love people. If we don't know God, if we don't have God's love, then we wouldn't really know how to celebrate Valentine's Day. Now, whether you celebrate Valentine's Day or not, the important thing is to celebrate it from a place where there's alignment with godly principles. So as a, as a believer, you should know the things that are not to be done, that you should not be doing on Valentine's Day. So the sexual immorality, the celebration of the fertility God indirectly should not be part of your Valentine's Day celebration. You should not be from that, you should not be celebrating Valentine's Day from that place of that is going to bring me gratification that is going to make me feel love only if people only if i receive something on valentine's day only if somebody buy me something then i know what love is no you're you're supposed to know what love is from what christ has done for you on the cross not based on anything that somebody could purchase from you you should already have received love from god so valentine's day should not be one that brings up insecurity it should not be one that bring makes you feel rejected and unloved because you are loved by god and the fact that so many people feel unloved on valentine's day is just sad be saddening because it completely it completely goes against the principle of god's love towards you that has already been demonstrated on the cross that is unconditional that is eternal that does not end that has no expiration date that is not dependent on what the worldly standards has set for what love is so i want you to know that god loves you that love is sufficient it's more than enough. Valentine's Day is not biblical. You don't have to celebrate it. If you choose to celebrate love God, love on that day, that love has to be God's definition of love, the biblical definition of love, and not what society has defined love to be. So I hope I would have helped you to kind of um, figure this topic out a little bit clearer. I know I haven't given a definitive yes or no. What I am saying is that we have to be guided by the biblical principles in how we celebrate every part of our daily routines and definitely we stay completely away from anything that is against biblical principles that is rooted in paganism when it comes to celebrating celebration of the fertility god and the original means by which the historical background of valentine's was associated with which we would have seen today so if you have questions you can leave it in the comment section we are starting a new initiative where we are opening a question and answer session every wednesday over zoom so you can be part of that where you can shoot your questions you can send it in via 
uh, text message or you can actually open up the chat and put on your mic and you can ask your question and all questions are welcome. So this Wednesday, you're going to be able to ask any questions around this topic of should Christians celebrate Valentine's Day? I'm sure those questions are going to be really interesting and I eagerly await that question and answer session. So if you haven't done it as yet, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button and do enjoy the rest of your day. If you're viewing this at day, the rest of your night, if you're viewing this at night, God bless you.